Some noise if you're having fun at the Pit Sketch Fest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Woo! I'm trying to make my way and not get tangled here. Start with a little bit of a dance routine with, with some of the, uh, the mics. Yeah, right? exactly. To, to introduce, uh, we've got Joe Leonardo right here. Oh my God, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, and to my left, we have our uh, tech expert, David Ryan Polgar, make some noise. Mmm, or Reese's peanut butter cup of comedy, as I like to say. Uh, Sonny and Cher, pre-divorce, whatever you yep. want to do. Yep, the good years. And the goal today is to combine tech and comedy. What we do is we bring a diverse range of experts to deal with some of the thorniest issues in technology. Mm. And I think one of them, Joe, uh, and I think everybody would agree, is what's the future of the internet? Exactly. What's going to happen right now? We have so much crazy technology going on. It's moving so fast. What will happen to our lives? Are you as scared as I am? Right. Oh, no. Well, we'll find out in a couple of years, I guess. Well, whether you're scared or optimistic, one of the things that we are excited about, since everybody here is getting a free drink after the show by Firefox. Firefox. Follow them on Twitter at <laughs> Firefox, F-I-R-E, Fox. I think the reason why we're excited uh, to, to partner today with Firefox, why we're powered by Firefox, is because Firefox is not a regular company. Right? Firefox is a browser, the only one that's made by a non profit that we'll mm -hmm. talk about today and they also support tech programs for for girls uh, and they also are fighting factual news and fighting against fake news and trust online yeah. in addition something that's really important is civility online I think we can all attest to that and Firefox with Mozilla yeah We're trying to bring some civility when people are uncivil online it could lead to things like electing a president <laughs> hello no your audience we, we can't get away from that, but that's the discussion today. So we're going to bring out some great experts yep. and have a free-flowing conversation. But before we start, we are in a comedy theater, so we'd like to, to do some comedy, right? I think that's a good way to start. <laughs> I think it's a good way to start a comedy show. But before I even get to that, before, before, uh, you guys all received note cards, right? Little quarter sheets. And you also received a blank, yep, wave them in the air. And you receive a little pencil, too. You can save that for golfing. Hopefully you hand them back. But uh, we're going to be taking audience questions uh, towards the end of the show. So halfway through the show, you figure a tech show, we'd have something more technology-oriented. But no, good old pen and paper will do. Just write down your question and your name, and we'll collect them, and we'll quickly answer those questions at the end of the show. So anytime we say something like, that's fucking weird, I want to <laughs> answer that question. I want to ask about down. that. Write it down. Yeah. Uh, but before we get going, we want to bring out a stand-up comic. This guy is hilarious. He's all around Brooklyn, all around Manhattan, uh, and he does a bunch of cool tech stuff. Uh, I want you guys to give a warm welcome to stand-up Pat Wise. <laughs> Hello, hello, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> All right, hey, hey everybody. Uh, my name is Pat Wise. Who here has seen uh, the Bernie Mac, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers bit? <laughs> you have, okay, you work here though, I'm pretty sure, so uh, that doesn't help. Uh, I need someone uh, to help me out on stage uh, if anybody would like to just, just you know what, hold up. Uh, not everybody, all at once. Yes. Hi, hello, give it up for her. Come down. Okay, what is your name? Emily. Emily, thank you so much for coming up, being so brave. So, you're gonna be my DJ. Great. Um, what I have here is my bed. I'm gonna show you some of the things below. Uh, so, when I tell you to hit it, you just gotta lift your foot. Okay. And stop it. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers bit that I have redone for this show. Here we go. Oh, g get, get excited. Yeah, that's what's up. Oh, guys, uh, oof, uh, you know, uh, 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 pen, man, ship. Which one is it? Kick it. Oh, give it some heat, give it some heat. It's gotta be so much louder than that. It doesn't give the same right now. 
There you go. Thank you. Wow, this a pro up here. Okay, so cut it. So that one was okay. Uh, we'll go. You know, you know uh, I'm excited, you guys. They're going to close uh, Guantanamo Bay. And you know what that means. Guantanamo Lake. Kick it. Cut it. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Because, you know, if, it, if a bay is closed on all sides, what does it become, Emily? It becomes a lake. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, whew, hot crowd. Here we go. Uh, is Diplo short for diplomacy? Kick it. Cut it. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Oh, guys, I finally did it. I finally did it. I, uh, I went out. I spent the money. I spent the money. Uh, I went to the store. I did all the shopping. I got a life. Kick it. Emily, you got to be quicker on it. A little quicker. Cut it. All right. You guys ever feel like you don't get enough sleep? You don't get enough sleep? Maybe you get, maybe you get too much sleep. You know, you get too much sleep. You ever feel like you get just enough sleep, but you still suck? Cut it. Kick it. Oh, cut it. Oh, man. We are, we are rolling along, Emily. Great job. Keeping it up. Oh, you guys, uh, you guys are, you guys obsessed with true crime podcasts like me and true crime and like war movies like me. You ever feel like all of your entertainment is just based around human suffering? <laughs> Kick it. Beautiful morning. Morning, Cut it. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Uh, singles tennis, doubles tennis. Why not hundreds tennis? Kick it. Beautiful morning. Oh, yeah, cut it. I didn't say cut it. I was going to let that one ride. I only was going to let that one ride. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Emily, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, I, was, uh, I was walking down the street the other day, and I saw this family uh, walking down the street. It was a mom and a daughter and a son. And the mom said, ah, Mira, watch out for the poop. Watch out. Watch out. And the, the daughter said, ah, oh, watch out, watch out. Look, watch out. And the son, <laughs> I'll never forget this. He's like, it's not going to move. Kick it. Beautiful morning. Oh, that's a Let's cut it. Uh, for this one, can you press this button? Don't press it now. This third one right here. Okay. Um, you guys ever take the uh, Myers-Briggs personality test? Uh, yeah, what do you guys get? Uh, INTJ, ADHD, HDTV. Uh, e anybody? Did anybody get anything? What did you guys get? Nobody's taken this test before? ENJ something? Okay. INFP? Cool. You guys know what I got? You know what I got? White hetero cis male. Kick it. All around me are familiar faces. What? Worn out places. Worn out faces. Bright and early. Beautiful morning. Get a sun in my morning, babe. gentlemen doing Bernie Mac <laughs> love it nice reference we all get <laughs> now that everybody is warmed up Joe I think we might need to start this show off with this discussion about the future of the internet about the future of the internet ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for our panelists today please welcome Alex Osola. She's an editor at Futurism, a website dedicated to the science that will shape the future. Before that, she was a freelance science journalist specializing in biotech, medicine, and the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Osola. <laughs> now give it up for David Berkowitz. He's a chief strategy officer at Sonosos, the insights-driven social platform. He, his previous roles included serving as chief marketing officer at uh, uh, Publix, uh, Publix? Publicist. Publicist Group Agency, MRY, and Vice President of Emerging Data at Dentsu Agency 360i. Ladies and gentlemen, David Berkowitz. <laughs> and keep that clapping going for Tracy, uh, Tracy Chow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she 
is an entrepreneur, software engineer, and diversity advocate. She is currently exploring and advising a wide range of new projects across the startup world, civil tech, and engagement, and diversity a uh, activism. Ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Chow. Like we can't start off until we until we really deal with the elephant in the room. There's a large elephant uh, in the room. Unfortunately, uh, we have invited uh, three fine panelists, but one of them happens to actually be a uh, serial killer. Uh, the son of Sam, uh, David Berkowitz, uh, is on stage with us today. So we should add context. The son, more references. <laughs> the son of Sam's real name is David Berkowitz. <laughs> He is right there, and that kind of makes us think that, uh, one, uh, we just want to hope that it's not the real son of Sam. That's why we have a no pet uh, policy uh, today. But uh, one of the things that we, we really want to think about is... This show will come with Wikipedia <laughs> entries. It should, it should. We'll just go online. Just go online. It's like lost. you got to yeah. really follow along here. Uh, we want to think about the idea of your doppelganger online, right? Your Google gang ganger. So even myself, right? I use David Ryan Polgar solely because I don't want a, a Google ganger. I'm, th I'm that, I guess, uh, I'm thinking about it that much. Because actually, uh, when, when I met my now wife, the yeah. after the first date, uh, she said, oh, Dave, I met this guy, David Polgar, and maybe we had too much drink, I can't remember. And then she, she Googled me, and then out came another David Polgar with, with dreads. And, and she was thinking, I don't know. Uh, I don't think he was that cool. He must I don't, have I don't, recently I got a haircut. Right, right. She didn't know. So I'd love to, to kind of start that discussion. We can start with uh, Son of Sam, or, or maybe Tracy, or Alex, uh, if you have any ideas about this. Because here we are in 2017, and we still haven't solved this problem, right? Everybody here has relatively common names. So Tracy, what do you think? Do you have any uh, Google gangers that you've uh, had to deal with? Yes, um, as, in, as an Asian person with a very generic white sounding first name and Asian last name, there are lots of other Tracy Chows, including <laughs> another one that went to Stanford at the same time that I did. And so we were frequently confused um, as uh, an undergraduate, I would get invitations to the grad school parties, which was not sketchy at all. <laughs> I've had to fight very hard for my SEO, but now I just spend a lot of time on the internet, and that is my solution. <laughs> <laughs> and, do you ha are there any uh, inappropriate uh, Tracy Chalice? Because I always wanted this too. There's a, a David Polgar now who is an, is an actor, and I feel really bad because I want his career to do well, but at the same time, it would kill my SEO. Right, so you have to kind of think about it. I even gobbled up davidpolgar.com just to kind of block him, unfortunately, but that's kind of what you, you have to do. So, I mean, is there any, is there any uh, Tracy Child that ever got uh, scandalous? I mean, there's, there's a few of well, them. Well, there is um, a Taiwanese actress named Tracy Chow, but that's actually a good thing, I think, because I do, so I was at um, Cannes Film Festival earlier this year, and I was trying to get a festival badge. And since Asians all look alike, I could point to the other Tracy Charles IMDb page. This is the Howard yeah. Stern show. Right? <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> David, so, did you ever have to deal with anything like that since you have such a famous name? Uh, so Infamous name. The, one of the worst and most depressing examples is, is, did anyone in the room ever have a GeoCities page? I'm dating myself, but uh, anyone? Athens slash Acropolis 8377, that was me. It was really, I, I love it. Uh, and, and so I set this up when I was in college, and that was like the thing nerdy college kids did who didn't really know how to use tech. Uh, and so, so I set up this page and it had picture, baby pictures of my niece and stories I wrote in high school and just random links that I thought were really funny at the time as a, like a not that funny 19 year old. And, and I had a guest book because that was also the social media of the late 90s. And all these people would go through this page, it was the last thing you'd see on the page, and write me and say, I love your work, you inspired me. And it was not about me, like, like oh, really, no. really weird stuff. I, I mean, I did a long term, like, back and forth over email with someone who thought I was in prison writing her, which was kind of fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, people are strangely attached to this guy, as I've discovered. Well, that's a thing, right? You always have the, uh, the serial killers who get, like, wedding, you know, proposals yeah. and, yeah. and stuff like that. For me, I'd say, like, I had, there was a Joe Leonardo who's a tango dancer. And I, my, we my, saw the mics earlier. We, oh we my God! My goal in life was to knock him off Google. Was have me be above the tango dancer, and thankfully I did. I am now above the tango dancer. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, you, you know you. I learned you, dancing. You know you've made it in life when you knock off your Google ganger. But you yeah. always wonder, right? What would it be like? What would it be like if I meet this this other day? I friended him on Facebook. Oh, did you? I did. He actually has. 
He kind of looks, he's a more handsome version of me. He has like uh, dark features, dark hair, and uh, uh, he's better in better shape. But I, I friended him just because why not, you know? And we talked for a while. I talked about comedy in New York. I think he does <laughs> dancing in Philadelphia. And uh, he dances all over. Yeah. Well, that's not, maybe I wear it too I think much. he's more successful than me. <laughs> Is a problem. I mean, maybe I worry too much, but I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like, yeah. what, what if my wife then goes with this other uh, dreaded David Polgar? I mean, is that infidelity if it's uh, well, with then the I same think your name? wife should love we, you for who you are. I don't think uh, Dr. Phil has dealt with that, right? Is um, it infidelity sure if it's the, uh, yeah. the same name person? But, Alex, what about your, yourself? Any uh, dealings with the Google ganger? Well, luckily, oh, sorry, it's really loud. Um, my last name is pretty distinctive, so... Uh, there aren't too many other Osolas online other than people that I know. There was once an Osola Facebook group that everybody, like some person added me with my last name. It was like everybody had the same last name, um, which was kind of cool. Um, no, but generally, I, I mean, I was telling you guys this earlier that I publish under the name Alexandra, so no one thinks I'm a dude. I get a lot of emails to Mr. Osola, and I'm like, I'm not my dad. But... Um, I abandoned an, an old Twitter handle that someone has like staked out now, which is really strange because it has it's my name, but there's like some other weird Wait, person. How they staked it, it out? They're, they're, they I like, claimed it. What yeah, I abandoned it because okay. it was too long. Sure. So now it's just like some. It's like at Alexandra Osola, and it's like somebody else doing stuff with my name, which is my own fault um, for not like doing what you did and sure. sort of like squatting on the, the domain. But yeah, I mean, so what do we all think of that? I mean, is that something, like I remember Ashton Kutcher when he was having a child, they said, okay, well now we need to give it a Gmail account, right? We, we need to give it, you know, all these different digital assets. Do you feel that sense of pressure where you, where you have to almost like gobble everything up? I feel like it's almost the wild, wild west where we're all trying to gather the property before it's all, all gone. Well, well, it's also weird, you know, we, I, I went through this discussion with my wife Hi. And uh, as uh, like one of the first things we were talking about as far as our kid's future once uh, our kid was born or like right around that time is like, what do we do with her digital presence, right? You know, like, do we get her all the email addresses and domain names and, and, and we're kind of hoping that a lot of stuff today just isn't around then and so, and some of it's like, you know what, just let her be creative and if she can't get her, perfect domain, like, I hope that is the worst of her problems, you know, 10, 15 years from now. Um, but it, but it's this very weird, like, it, like, it's an active choice. It's not one of those things you could just let pass by. I think maybe in the future we'll revert to those, like, do you remember your first AOL email address that was, like, nowhere near your name? It was something very embarrassing, like your hobby. Um, maybe they'll, they'll get into that in another when 15 years. When down, that was, I remember everybody was posting about their, their going away message or their screen name or something like that. But it, 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 I, I don't know if that hit like a specific age group, but I remember being like 13, 12, and everybody having like crafting that aim away message and spending so much time on it. And it's basically like, you know, I don't know, hanging out with cooler people. Well, I always find it confusing like when I receive an email with somebody from an AOL account because I can't tell if they're doing it kind of like a PBR. Is it like an irony, like email, or, or are they really still, still using their AOL account, right? I, I can't separate the irony from the, from the, actual, uh, the actual account. But yeah. I think that's a good kind of transition because if we're talking about, hey, people are registering their digital assets, we also want to think about how do we act online, right? Uh, I don't need to tell you that uh, you see it all the time in the, in the news, right? Uh, people don't always act uh, in, uh, in a very kind fashion online. We have lots of trollish uh, type of behavior. So what, what can we do? We want to talk about this concept of what some people call like digital citizenship, right? The safe, savvy, ethical use of social media and tech. And I know, Tracy, you probably have a lot of uh, kind of experience kind of dealing with this. I know I saw you at a, a previous talk where I thought it was interesting uh, you, you mentioned that, that a lot of this has to do with maybe even sometimes the design of a product, right? Whether, whether people are inherently good or, or inherently evil. Any thoughts uh, on this? Mm, um, I feel like most products online right now are pretty terribly designed with this um, aspect of things. Maybe partly due to the fact that many of the people building these products don't necessarily experience as much harassment as the users do. So when you have, um, you know, not to overgeneralize, but lots of white men building these products, they don't experience the same sort of harassment that women might, for example. Um, so I think just a, the experience of being a woman on Twitter is quite different. Um, 
gotten very used to just blocking and reporting people all the time and try not to get upset about it. The grossness that is online, is that do, or do people act differently when there is that wall between them and another person? Like the uh, being anonymous, you just make up a Twitter handle. You know. So the thing is, I think anonymity does make people worse, but there's also plenty of people that will say very terrible things with to their names face, attached. Yeah, with their names and addresses. Like I've posted that. things on LinkedIn and Medium, which are ostensibly relatively professional places, and people will comment on LinkedIn with horribly racist things. Yeah. Including one time I had somebody who was a head of HR at her company leaving racist comments on my post. I was like, wow, this is your professional image. Great. A plus. So why, why do you think that is? If anybody has any kind of comments on that, right? But I always like to think of like the Stanford prison study. If we think about kind of human nature, is a lot of it this environmental design? Like, do we act differently based on the social cues? And a lot of a lot of right, companies are trying to do this to to uh, to tug at, let's say, our our better angels. Alex, with some of your your experience, do you have any uh, kind of thoughts on this about maybe what we can do to kind of push people towards uh, better behavior online? Because uh, as Tracy just pointed out, right, we think it's anonymity, but, the, but at the same time, something like Facebook, where it's clearly transparent, you still see people uh, sometimes acting in a, in a very kind of uh, non-civil type of fashion. Yeah, I mean, Twitter, I think, is a, a really good example, because I don't know about you all, but I get this sort of like feeling when I open up a, a social media site or app, and Facebook's like, what are my friends are doing? Instagram is like, whose lives are better than mine? And Twitter's like, who's talking shit about me now? <laughs> and, and I think that has something to do with the design. I think you're right about that. But when I think about online communities, I think back to, like, I think you have to think about Reddit at a certain point, right? And I found the happiest place in Reddit. And it's our diabetes. <laughs> this is this is for a story that I was doing about like DIY diabetes things that people are doing at home and, and it was a really supportive community. They were just trading tips on how to manage this thing that they didn't want or ask for. And they were all really helpful. And they you know, it was in the rules like don't say mean things and just be constructive and they really did that. So for my story I reached out to like eight people just and I was like, I'm a reporter doing a story on this, please write back. Why would anyone respond to that on Reddit? I, I don't know. But everyone did. 100% of messages <laughs> received a response. And I interviewed them, and they were from all over the world, and they were amazing. Is that because of the, you're saying it's regulated to, to nobody to have mean, is it because they're generally nice, or we only see the nice things? Is I, there cra are there crazy people with diabetes that we just don't <laughs> see? I don't, I don't, I got the sense that it was a really self-governed community. Like, every person I spoke to was totally normal and was just there for all the right reasons. So maybe yeah. it's be for the reason that they were there was a really constructive one, but um, there, there is hope, even so on Reddit. What, what do you think we can do, right? Because a lot of comment sections, I always like to call it like six degrees of Obamacare before when he was president, that by the sixth comment, it somehow dealt with it. Obamacare. It could start with lawn care and then it ends with Obamacare, yeah. right? So... What can we do to kind of kind of tilt it towards that that better better behavior? Is it the the social cues? Is it the the online type of moderation? I, I got it. Give everybody diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing, right? I like this the the, the do it yourself kind of kind of community uh, for it. So uh, one well, chocolate cake at a time will make a big, the world a better a big, place. Uh, this is a big issue, right? The first lady right now is, is focused on. Uh, on yeah, oh God, board, yeah. So. <laughs> No, no comments. No comment, but yes. Oh, yeah. Right now, the first lady is focused on, for those who don't know, is cyberbullying. And what better case study does she have than she, the person she spends a room with? That's all I'll say. I'll edit all this out. <laughs> in case she's on in the future. But I, I yeah. see some... In case uh, we get Melania Trump <laughs> here at this show, that'd be great. We, you never know. We, yeah, we'll you never know. We'll have to have... Uh, uh, Trump merchandise with yeah. us and jewelry. But um, I saw some Pew research that just came out uh, earlier this week. I love to kind of hear and have a discussion about it. They were looking at the future of truth and misinformation online. Big area. It kind of sounds like a, sh a show uh, of ours, right? It sounds like the titles we choose. So yeah. experts, this is what they said, Pew Research. Experts are evenly split on whether the coming decade will see a reduction in false and misleading narratives online. Those forecasting improvements place the hopes in technological fixes and in societal solutions. Others think the dark side of human nature is aided more than stifled by technology. So Tracy, you have a lot of kind of experience in this, uh, this end, as we were talking <laughs> about with dealing, right? You said uh, before you have uh, passed at Quora kind of dealing with this. So I'd love to kind of hear or, or kind of 
uh, some of your own kind of experiences or maybe that internal uh, dialogue that you have or, or maybe discussions that were going on at, at a company level? Yeah, so I've worked at Quora and Pinterest and at both companies I spent some time working on the home feed, which is uh, the thing that people see when they log in. So it's like the, the, the main um, attention focus. And unfortunately from my experiences working on home feed and also seeing what's been playing out on Facebook and Twitter, I'm pessimistic about the direction we're heading in. I think it's just too easy for us um, as engineers to optimize around the easy but bad metrics. And so things that we would optimize for at Pinterest, for example, would be um, pins and click-throughs. And so very similar to the sort of like clickbaity things that are successful on Facebook, um, those things are the ones that are easy to measure, uh, but they also cause people to share things that are rage-inducing, even if they're not necessarily true. Um, and it's very hard to get people as excited about the truth when it's not as interesting. So Do people just want to get a rise out of people, though, online? There's a whole South Park episode that was on, I think it was last season, actually. It, there's some people online that just want to cause chaos, right? And they just want to basically tear down any type of orderly uh, you know, infrastructure or anything like that. What do you do about those people? What do you do about that? Well, it, how do you it, fight that? You know, it, it's just a lot more noticeable, especially over the past 12 months. But this isn't an online thing. Like, like my first time in LA uh, it was November 2005, and uh, I'm sitting in the back of a cab. They had those before this Uber thing came out, uh, so I had to hail one. It was, it, it was rough, uh, and so the <laughs> now they have an app for it oh, for mm -hmm. for yellow cabs here in the city. This, um, um, yeah. you need to send me these links because you really need to iTunes.com. Okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> And so, so this guy, he's the driver, he's asking me where I'm from, and I'm like, New York. He's like, no, where are you really from? I'm like, well, Eastern Europe. He's like, no, where are you really from? Uh, and I'm like, okay, we can have this conversation. And then he said, did you know that, that all the Jews stayed home on 9-11? And, you know, the, uh, uh, yeah. so... Uh, I, I did, of course. I was calling all my friends saying, like, don't go to Lower Manhattan that day. <laughs> It, it, it was great, um, uh, and, and it's, uh, I mean, it's rough knowing people and knowing others who know a lot more people and, and having been in the city that year. was this? Uh, so this was 2005 That's that I was having this conversation. Not that long ago. And, 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 so, and uh, so he was, you know, and he was telling me how he heard this on the radio and so that, and, you know, I'm trying to appeal to his better nature and say, like, look, you're a bright guy, you're educated, you're, you know, not the racist, really... Uh, unintelligible asshole that you're coming off as right now, and uh, uh, you know, just trying to hold back. And also, we're on the freeway, and you know, I, can't I don't anywhere. really have a way to escape this car, so I've got to deal with him. I, I'm just rem uh, like debating for for 40 minutes whether I have to tip the guy, right? <laughs> you, know, so. you get you no know, tip with anti-Semitism. You get no tip. I, I, I think I, I think only gave him 10. percent yeah. So it was just. But then that I I couldn't be in. the Jew who doesn't tip. You know? <laughs> exactly. Like, really, you're like, perpetuating a stereotype. This is what I'm thinking yeah. of as I'm being a, a victim of a you know, of racist slander in the back. Of his cap, uh, but like th this is also like it's clearly not just an American thing, yeah. but but like we love these whack job crack pots and. But now it that. is an American thing. Well, now it is an Amer. Now you'll go into an American cab and you'll hear the same crazy stuff. Like I feel like it's mainstream now, and these people are getting. I don't. Maybe it's the media. Maybe it's the cable news or whatever. Or. This, we're hearing the opinion of these people that are so small. I've heard uh, the NRI has less members than there are employees at Target or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong with that fact, but it's something very small. But they're, they're getting the I think same. The, the key part that we can really kind of expand on, right, is like, like you said with the, the cab driver. So oh, I, I heard it on the radio somewhere, right? So that's kind of like this media literacy that we really need to kind of promote in this country. So, I mean, what do we think about that? Because you always hear it. Oh, I, I saw it on the internet. As, as if the, the internet. Well, yeah. what are the, I wonder what we're conceiving of as, as the internet. So, so Alex, what do, you, what do you think about that? How can we promote more people from, let's say, going on futurism.com or, or something that's more <laughs> trustworthy than you know, Joe's blog, and then treating it as, as the same. There's so a lot of crazy shit elitist, on my blog. We still might want to assume that there's a, a discrepancy sometimes in, in journalistic standards. Well, 
well, standards you would hope that they <laughs> exist, yeah. which is yeah. a, you know an assumption that we'll make. But I, I did read that Pew thing you were talking about, and what I found really fascinating is I think it was like 23% of people knowingly shared something fake. That's really weird. Like I, I kind of get it if you think something is real and it's so inflammatory and you can't believe it and everybody has to know this true thing I know about supplements. I don't know. There's a lot of fake stuff about that. Um, but I also, as a side note, my dad tells me all the time that the internet is full of lies, which is really great because I write for the internet. <laughs> like that's my job, but it's okay, fine. And he also sent me an article from the Daily Mail, which is like very fake. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> you like have to kind of train the stuff and you really have to have your sort of like antenna up, to use a very old metaphor. Um, but yeah, I mean, if something sounds off to you, if it doesn't pass the sniff test, read a couple more articles, see who's sharing this, see what your friends think, don't share it because people will read it and they'll think it's real. Like send it to people like, do you think this is real in an email or something if you really aren't sure. And the thing I'm concerned about is that people don't seem to care about the truth anymore. They care about so winning. Oh, we can dark. talk about like, <laughs> here are strategies for finding the truth, but if people don't want to, then it doesn't really matter how good our like, fake news So why do you think are. they don't care about the truth? Is it because that's not serving their cause and they can kind of reverse engineer everything to kind of say, here's something that validates my own bias, I my own I think people opinion? just want to believe what they want to believe and have the world be the way they want it to. And it doesn't really matter if they're actually correct. Oh, frankly, I'm always amazed that the onion is still doing so well, right? It's like everything has turned into the onion. I, uh, how, do you, how do you separate what, like what's an onion headline? between what, what you're seeing kind of in your, in your social feed. It's funny that you bring that up. And with Reddit, there's a Reddit subreddit called Not The Onion that is just news articles that sound like Onion articles, but it's reality. <laughs> and it is literally just turning into every day now. No, oh, I check the, the URL. Out. I'll see a headline and I'll be like, is this The Onion? And I'll have to look. Yeah. Really? I was like, that's like, uh, literally unbelievable. Did you there? <laughs> and so, all, so Onion headlines and then real people reacting to it as if it's... <laughs> You know, actual news, and so, yeah. Well, I think that's kind of the the kicker, right? Like here, everybody on stage, we're all we're all trying to get attention, as we call it, like the the attention economies, right? That's that's what's limited right now. But everybody's trying to promote a career or or, or get somebody to read an, an article. How do we how do we walk that fine balance, right? Uh, like like Alex, are you ever kind of do you ever feel like oh, okay, maybe this headline is too it's too clickbaity. Do you ever do you ever yes. have that discussion? <laughs> and what do you what do you do on that? Because I don't know about futurism.com, but you know a lot of sites use like A/B testing things mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, frankly, I don't really know how futurism does it, but uh, I know a lot of places that I've, I freelance for years before mm -hmm. that, and um, there were sometimes sources who would be kind of upset at the headline. They'd say the article is really good, but the headline makes us not able to share this from Harvard's Twitter account, and. Um, I get it. Like people will click on stuff from the headline, and that's oftentimes like people will say, "I saw this headline. I did not read the article. That is the information I'm working with." And if it's inflammatory, that's kind of a problem. Wow. Because I know one of the original standards, right, for for writing for for BuzzFeed was come up with 25 headlines. So it really kind of indicates how important the headline is. And uh, I don't know, you kind of wonder important. if we're placing so much emphasis on the headline. It's like uh, nobody's going to read the, the meat of it. Right? 25 listicles. They want. Just list. They want headlines, and then they want the lit. Nothing, not against BuzzFeed, but this is what they want. They want the just a list of things because they know they get advertiser revenue from people clicking on it. It is literally clickbait. Click, uh, clickbait. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, but that's also getting to part of the point. Like, okay, what if we don't solve the you know the consumption part of it, but then you know the production, the business models, the you know that people are getting. Uh, ad dollars for it. There was, yeah. uh, it, you know, it, there was a company that uh, last year when I was consulting and I, and I was looking for my next thing, and there was a company that posted on its website how many trillions of ad impressions they served. And I went there for the interview and I said to them, well, what are you going to do next because this doesn't matter. Yeah. And I didn't get the job, in case you're wondering. Uh, and I also never got that BuzzFeed job. <laughs> <laughs> I did apply. But, but this company is making a shit ton of money doing what they're doing, and they're just not motivated to do anything differently. And so, yeah. and they're, they're definitely, you know, not that I'm like, you know, coming down from the mountain, you know, I'm not a hero by any means, but there yeah. aren't enough people like me who care. <laughs> 
I told a cabbie off once. Hire me. You have to wonder, though, about, <laughs> you're talking about, David, the, the, the business model. And I know that's a huge debate, right, in Silicon Valley, a lot of, a lot of tech companies. Uh, some of you, do, do you feel like the business model is, is what's creating some of the issues? Because there's that kind of phrase that we like to say, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. A lot of, a lot of our, our tech companies are based on the data monetization model, which obviously is going to deal with some potentially uncomfortable privacy issues. So for example, even if you take uh, Facebook, right? Should, should we flip that around? And I know there was an op-ed a couple of years ago about it. Hey, I'd rather pay for Facebook because frankly, I am paying for Facebook just on the back end as opposed to up front. Yeah, well, I mean, there's the story that came out that Google was running fake news ads on fact-checking sites, you know? And so, uh, so some, like, it's impossible to solve all of this and you don't want to get to the point where, where, where People are manually determining every, you know, it, some acceptability standard, and you start getting yeah, like heavy regulation, slope. or like uh, you're talking uh, about like regulating all this, right? Right. So, but some, going through some arbiter. But if there isn't any self-regulation, then you know, and it's and you're not, you know, and you're not getting rid of the most flagrant violations of any policy whatsoever. It's like, like Twitter's now finally coming out and saying. You know, we've got to do something about this, and come January, we'll have done something. I, I, how many years have people been calling Twitter out on this? Yeah. Sure. It's almost like as if it, it takes a grassroots movement. They wouldn't have done this without done. you guys basically saying, we need to do this, right? It was this audience. It was, this, it was you guys specifically who showed up. Thank you very much. And on that note, we should get to our game. Let's do a game. Let's while, do a game. While we're playing our game, you guys got your little note cards, your little pencils. Write out your questions. Start hey, I got questions. something I want to say about that cab driver or Joe applying for BuzzFeed and not getting the job. No, real questions. Uh, uh, while we're playing our fun game here, and then we'll collect your cards afterwards. And we do this fast game because Firefox is, what, twice as fast now for November 14th? Exactly. We're doing out. a shorter show. We're doing we the same amount of information. <laughs> for a, we're doing a faster show with the same amount of information because Firefox said we could do it, and we <laughs> damn well we did it. we're powered by Firefox. If we're just we're powered, powered by uh, Red Bull, uh, we go, we're like the Oscars, and we go really slow that yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, with Firefox, boom, we speed through. So with this game, we do a word association. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say a word, and you're just going to say, what, what's your knee-jerk reaction? Tracy, we'll start with you. That was great. Okay, when you hear, when you hear the word troll. Harassment. Well, the cartoons. Yeah, the little dolls with the pink hair. Oh. Uh, I was wondering that yeah. right when they were releasing the movie, whether Justin Timberlake, like, how do, how do we deal with the connotation of troll? I wonder if that's a generational thing about, like, uh, hearing the word troll. If I said troll Justin to my... Justin Timberlake is not a troll. He was in the movie. And he sang the song. It was a very catchy song. <laughs> There's the song. Okay. There's a song for the song. There's the song. There's There's a song. There's a song. You did a great job. If we had the rights to that song, we'd play it for you, but we don't. <laughs> that would be our theme song. So our... Our, our next term, net neutrality. Facebook. Netflix. Important. Oh. <laughs> cool. There we go. No slow lanes for the internet, right? especially when we're talking about yes. the future of... Just to define it, neutrality is, for, I'm saying this for me more than anybody else. Oh, sure, yeah. Is well, we... you're, you have, uh, the, the internet doesn't get touched. Everybody has the same speed. If I make a website for myself versus Netflix or, or YouTube or whatever, we all go to the same speed. Yeah. Uh, if there isn't net neutrality, they, they pay the ISPs for a fast lane, mm -hmm. and I go slower... If I have a shop, people, instead of going, they'll go to Amazon instead of me or whatever right. because it's, they're more likely to, to go to a fast Well, because the, the, the hot debate that's going on right now is the five major uh, so, uh, tech companies, because they're so large, can they potentially just buy up any startup that's getting hot exactly. as opposed to our, our ideal uh, idea of the tech industry is that we today can come up with a cool startup, right? You're an entrepreneur, Tracy, and we can come up with something today that becomes a unicorn, that becomes a yeah. you know, billion dollar company, uh, but, it, but it becomes tricky sometimes when you have multiple tentacles and, yeah, and but, that's the way. But Congress says it's good for the internet. <laughs> That's Cong another. I Congress was told. really understands yeah, yeah. science and engineering. There's a lot yeah. of engineers there. What's well, back in the news? We thought we dealt with it before, yeah. right? Wikipedia and, and, and organizations like that. Next word. We have no time. It. Next word. <laughs> Phrase. You hear it all the time right now. And uh, our president may have invented it. It is called fake news. I hate Trump. <laughs> Lies. Real. 
Ooh, <laughs> I like that. It's real. And that's actually your true answer because there's fake news on both sides. But there's one person who's taking advantage of it. That's what I'm getting from this. We do sports commentary on your reactions, <laughs> by the way. I, I agree with that. I think it. it I think I. And I, I do think it's. BS, and I, I think it's bad, but I do think it's real. I think there's a lot of fake news out there. There's a lot of BS, a lot of propaganda. Well, we've seen that evolution, right? We talk about uh, Stephen Colbert originally with the truthiness, and now that kind of seems like, wow, no, almost nostalgic for that day period, a uh, time period. So it has altered a lot. So, Joe, do we want to move on to some, some yeah, questions? Yeah, where is that? It? No, that's that. We've that's done it. our th- we were that fast because. Uh, uh, and Kate Sidley, our wonderful Kate Sidley, round of applause for her. She'll go around and Woo! collect her questions, and we'll. Uh, uh, so just hold up your piece of paper and your pencils. We'll collect those and uh, we'll do some questions uh, uh, from you guys. Before we go, sure. just to uh, uh, clarify for me, truthiness, just to define it for me, not for the audience, uh, that is uh, thinking from your gut, right? C- having your facts be from your gut. What you feel is being real is, in fact, the truth. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Right? Yes. Cool. Are you all on the same page? <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you. Okay, and we got some questions. It's a little a spitfire round. We have a couple minutes left. We'll leave some questions. Uh, uh, we'll go down the line here, starting with Tracy. What is your favorite emoji? <laughs> These, this one's from a Walter Cronkite. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like the ghost emoji. Yeah. Playful, fun, in season. <laughs> the hospital one always comes in handy. That's deep, dark, <laughs> says a lot. The, the one that looks like this. Uh, anxiety ridden, uh, yeah, it's very like, nervous. Hey. Yeah. People love their emojis. What about you? What's your favorite emoji? Dude? You know, I, I, I need to use more. I'm not uh, comfortable enough because I still feel like uh, people aren't going to take me seriously if I use too many emojis. So that's a whole other Woody Allen complex. Well, who are you well, <laughs> You're normally texting me. I, I go, but I don't use a lot of emojis. I'm very, I'm very serious. Guy. I'm a big fan of the thumbs up. Yeah. Because I hate respond. I just be like, I got your message. I don't want to. Oh talk yeah, to I you. do use. I the- send it to you a lot. I oh, do yeah. want to talk to you. No, no, no. I, All right. No, I, I, I agree. That a thumbs up is supposed to be we're done here. Like that's that's, that's a I thumbs got, up. Yes, we're done. Here. No, because oh my God, because I'm, sometimes it never ends. Somebody's like, thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thumbs up. Like when does it stop? Why are we hosting show? Well, the together? thumbs up stresses me out because I don't know which skin color to pick. I do yellow. Oh, that that's good. Is yellow one. not good? That's a default. But it's so yellow. <laughs> but that's the default. The default is there's yellow and then there's uh, uh... next question. <laughs> All right. In the age of misinformation, what is the public's role in maintaining and participating in a democratic state? Uh, uh, there's more. What are the consequences in terms of accountable representation? And is there regulation? Uh, if is regulation the answer to the problems of big tech? Uh, two sentences, please. <laughs> that person does not use emojis either. No. Uh, well, how do you guys feel about any of those questions? I, I think it was Thomas Paine who said, "No taxation without representation," and I'm a big believer in that. Mm. Cool. Uh, I think this person needs medical attention because <laughs> I think uh, they started fine and then they had uh, a stroke, I'm assuming, halfway through. But we love that you came to the show. Uh, I think this is intent. F- what does that say? Intent fuel something? We'll post a picture of this question online. I'm not sure. I think and it's a well, thought, though. you guys can. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll give a dollar to whoever decides. Uh, decides it, kinda, it. it was, it was like a, a son of Sam type. Oh of no! Guy. <laughs> David, do you know this person? Can you read this? Uh, was, can oh, you make that? Oh, out? cousin Schlobo. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm yeah, a little yeah, wary no, now. No, I got so cool. I didn't know. Are we showing up so to these quirky. things? <laughs> oh, cousin Schlobo. Uh, what gives you hope for the future of tech? This is at. EF bomb, E F B A U M. What gives you hope for the future of tech? Good question. Yeah. Let's go down the line. Start with you, Tracy. <laughs> Let's be hopeful here. We don't want to. We don't want to leave depressed, right? We want to have a good time. Yeah. Get our um, <laughs> Fire, Firefox cocktail. Have a good time. Discuss. We're starting to have more people participate in building technology, which is good, and hopefully we'll steer our ship in a better direction than we have been. We cool. set the bar so low that it's only it's only going it's, it's only going, going Yeah, up. the bar's on the floor right now, so we can just step <laughs> over it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, beyond th- that, 
all, all those great extensions you can get in Firefox. Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's, there, there are some things on that micro level where it's like I, I, family members from around the world who I get to stay in touch with on a, a daily basis and family members who I get to block on a near daily basis. You know, it, it's yeah. great that it kind of brings us together and, and keeps things very real. Alex? Um, I think that the people who are creating the things that we use more and more frequently genuinely want good things. The execution might leave mm -hmm. something to be desired in, in many ways, and people are being more vocal about that and participating in the process. But yeah, they, they generally want the world to be better. Great. What about you, David? Well, I think that's the key part. Kind of like Alex said, we, we're, we have the same mission, but it's not not as easy as we like to think. They were talking about that today in the New York Times, right? Dealing with uh, online harassment uh, with Facebook and what offends and what doesn't offend their, their policies. And it, it's always difficult. Like, there's, there's, no, there's no quick lines. Everything's based on context. But I think right now, we are at that point, we talked about last show, right? Being woke, where we're saying, okay, this is a big freaking deal. The internet affects all of us, how we act online and offline. It, it deals, you know, it, it impacts our, our family life. Let's, let's make it better. Let's build a better web. I think that's, that's something that we can get behind. Great. I would say, yeah, uh, I would say awareness of fake news. People, I, there seems to be an awareness of what's fake now online. And I think uh, it's almost like when the printed press first came about, there was a lot of BS and nobody knew it was real. It took a while to, for it to be like, okay, here and that. It's the, almost the same thing of what's happening right now again. Check your history books, people. Uh, next question. Uh, second to last question. Hi, what do you recommend to do if you want to wipe your existence off Google? Don't read out loud. Uh, P.S. Also, do you know anyone s selling a Roomba? I've looked on eBay, but the idea of buying a robot that has swept up a stranger's pubes kind of makes me nervous. Yes! That is from Ash. Uh, but what do you recommend if you want to wipe your existence off Google? If you want to just get rid of your internet uh, existence, well, how, would you, how would you start? Or what would you do? If you change your name to a really notorious, heinous person, then it can essentially be as if you don't exist in Google. So that helps. I, I do have a friend in the UK working on this particular issue. It's the right to be forgotten, or it's yeah. something like yeah. that. Um, and yeah, I mean, people are working on it. It's not here yet. So yeah. you're gonna have to suffer through for a little while, but it, it might happen. Yeah, I think we, we do need that right to be forgotten. And I think with the Roomba, they were talking about how uh, right, a lot of those products are actually taking a lot of the data and they could monetize it based on the, the layout of your room. Yeah, um, last that. question, we'll keep this super short because we definitely gotta get out of here. Uh, uh, how, would you, how would the world be different if we paid for social media accounts and we were not the product of ourselves. John. Uh, net neutrality, vote next month. Call your representatives. Net neutrality, vote is next month. Call your representatives. John made sure to say that. Uh, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> Do you want me to read the question again? <laughs> uh, how would the world be different if we were paid for social media accounts instead of being the product ourselves? How would it be different? If we pay or they yes, pay Yes, we us. paid for it instead of uh, us being the product of selling. Or if you think that we should be paid. Or if right? you think there's no difference at all. There was a, a Jaron uh, Lanier, yeah. right, uh, uh, talking about you're not a, pro, you're not a gadget, right? Yeah. So, so you should have a micropayment system. Is, would there be a difference in social media if they, their marketing, their uh, profiting strategy was that we paid for it as opposed to advertising based? I think it would take longer to find biases in the algorithms mm. and, and problems with the design. David? Uh, yeah, I, I think people would just find all kinds of new non-social ways to get their misinformation. Tracy. Yeah, I don't think people want to pay for things. Yeah. And so it would be actually very difficult for new social networks to get started because the whole model is getting people to try something because it's free and then getting enough people that you can monetize it. But if people aren't on the network yet, then you have a bootstrapping problem where mm -hmm. it's not interesting for them so they don't want to pay to get on. And so you can never build a network. So I think yeah. fundamentally we won't see any new social networks come about. And I guess the ones that exist now, people are getting value out of them, they might be willing to pay. But I think the usage would just drop and we would see people shift towards, I don't know, doing other things. So I, I don't even know if the, the question can be answered in the way yeah. that we want to. It wouldn't exist, to. nobody would pay for it. That's the way I feel. Sure. How do you feel? 
quickly. You know, yeah, I, I think uh, we, we are going to eventually move into that. The, the worry is that, that we would turn privacy into, uh, we would commodify it, and only the wealthy could then have private information. Ah. So that's the, that's the problem. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is funny as tech. Let's Thank give you. a round of applause to Alex Osala, David Murkowitz, and Tracy Town. Uh, Tracy Town, make sure to check out. Project Include, Project Include and the area. So check that out uh, for Alex. The arena. the arena. The arena, shit, I can't spell. <laughs> I rely on tech to spell check me. Uh, um, uh, Alex Osala, check out Futurism, bursting with original content. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, David Berkowitz, check out uh, a serial marketer. Dot, you're not helping yourself. <laughs> You're not helping yourself. It actually is a site. That is a site. (laughs) Serialmarketer.net. Serial spelled as in serial killer and not the serial. Uh, I want to give give yourselves a round of applause. I want to give a big round of applause um, for Firefox for doing this. Make sure to check out. They have a uh, new um, uh, uh, browser that's dropping next month. Make sure to check out. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, big thanks to Pat Wise for opening to us, to John in the booth, to Kate taking pictures, and to you guys. Safe travels. Head go home. Bye. All right, thank you.